So hello, welcome to Wildwood. And we'd like to start this talk by apologising for the fact that we have no goats at Wildwood. We have had goats here in the past, but at present, no goats whatsoever. And if you're wondering what those things are behind me, they are not goats. These are Soe sheep. It's true to say that Soe sheep uh, are very goat-like, but they are a true type of sheep. They are small, they're tough, they're very adaptable, and they have a very unusual claim to fame. Soe sheep come from Scotland. To be exact, they come from one single island off the coast of Scotland. To be more precise, if you wanted to visit the island of Soe, you'd have to go to Scotland, cross the Isle of Skye, out to the Outer Hebrides, and then keep going west. There's a little archipelago of islands known as the St Kilda Group, and the westernmost one is the island of Soe. Soe is actually the most westerly, undisputed part of the British Isles. It's a relatively small island, it's about 99 hectares, and is uninhabited. Only the sheep live on Soe. If you're wondering about the difference between sheep and goats, well, they are close cousins, but they are separate families. The differences include the fact that goats are quite often solitary. Sheep tend to live in groups. Goats tend to be browsers, so they'll feed on leaves and bushes. Sheep primarily are grazers, they feed just on the grass. But if you want to go for a giveaway sign, look at the tails. If it's a sheep, the tail will point down. If it's a goat, the tail will point up. I said that the Soe sheep have an unusual claim to fame, and it's very, very simple. These are the oldest known breed of sheep in the world. We're pretty sure that they were on the island in the Iron Age, so we're looking 2,000 years ago, but it is suspected that they may date right back to the late Stone Age, the Neolithic. And that means that they've been on their island of Scotland for about 7,000 years. There are various things that tell you that they're a very ancient breed. One of the things is their fleece. You can probably see that they're looking a bit scruffy at the moment. They're actually losing their thick winter fleece. Most modern breeds of sheep you have to shear, but the Soes, and some of the more ancient breeds, they actually naturally lose the fleece. It can actually be plucked or pulled off them without harm. And it was originally used for making tweed cloth. Another sign is the fact that both the males and the females have horns. When you think of the modern breeds of sheep, it's usually the males, the rams, that have the horns. The females, the ewes, do not. And finally, there's their personality. And the truth is, not only do they look goat-like, they act goat-like. It's fair to say that a lot of sheep are not very independent. They work together as a group, a team. The Soes are real individuals. They are tough. They are incredibly good on uh, rocky slopes and rocky areas. They are natural escape artists. And they cannot be herded by a sheepdog. And this is because when you herd most sheep, they automatically clump together. Soes do the exact opposite. They all scatter in different directions. Even the poor dog just standing there thinking, well, which one do I chase? Why do we have sheep at Wildwood? Admittedly, they're a very ancient type of sheep, but there's two main reasons for having them here. The first is that they are a recognized rare breed. The rare breeds are types of domesticated animals that are at risk of being lost. These can include anything from sheep, goats, cattle, even types of poultry. At the moment, there are between 900 and 1,500 Soe sheep in the wild, total. It would be very, very easy to lose the entire population. One of the good reasons for wanting to keep the rare breeds is that many of the modern domestic animals have lost immunities and other qualities. They've been bred for specific purposes like meat or milk or fleece. 
and that has been at the loss of other qualities. With the rare breeds, it's possible to breed back those lost qualities. The other reason for having them at Wildwood is that we use them in rewilding projects. If you go back about 20 years, if you wanted to manage a habitat, you'd probably get volunteers in to help. They go in and manually start pulling up plants. Unfortunately, that's very destructive and disruptive. Today, you look for an animal that will actually do a similar role. Less destructive, low impact, and usually has more benefits for the ecosystem. We're currently using Soe sheep down at Devon, at our second park, Escot, to remove weeds that are overgrowing parts of the site. And they're doing a very good job. There's one final thing about the Soe sheep that I absolutely adore, and it's the fact that they are something of a tautology. And if you're wondering what that means, a tautology is when you repeat a phrase or words using different words. That doesn't make sense. Um, good example, Sahara Desert. The word Sahara actually means desert. So technically the Sahara Desert is the desert desert. Soe sheep are potentially a double tautology. I mentioned earlier that the Isle of Soe was named by the Vikings. Now, Soe itself actually means the island of sheep. So if you're talking about the Isle of Soe, technically you're talking about the Isle of the Isle of the Sheep. If you're talking about Soe sheep, technically you're talking about island of the sheep, sheep. And you literally could not make this stuff up. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about one of our less expected residents and we hope you enjoy your visit when you come to see us here at Wildwood.